Baku The Azerbaijan capital has become a cult venue in recent years, with crazy races often on the agenda and a two-kilometre straight offering plenty of passing changes. But it was a little bit more… sensible this year. No proper safety cars punctuated the race and all the drivers got the crashes out of the system in qualifying and practice. Instead, Baku was causing a very different problem, this time proving to be a spine crusher as the cars bounced heavily on the straights. Lewis Hamilton in particular struggled with the bouncing of his Mercedes W13, complaining of severe back pain during the race and a numb bum, and looked in agony as he pulled himself out of the car at the end. Many of the other cars looked like they were struggling with the bumps on the start-finish straight too, so let's take a look at what was happening. In comparison to 2021's cars, the 2022 Formula and underbody aero means that teams need to run their cars as low as possible, and with very stiffly sprung suspension to keep the Venturi tunnels working. On the straights, the tunnels are generating a very large level of downforce and the suspension compresses under load. But because it's so stiffly sprung, it struggles to absorb the bumps in the road surface, pitching the car into a bounce in reaction to the oscillations as it bottoms out. That meant that Hamilton's back was taking the brunt of the impact in an excessively bouncy Mercedes, and team boss Toto Wolff suggested there might even be concerns over whether Hamilton was able to shake off the pain in time for the Canadian Grand Prix. Hamilton's teammate George Russell, however, has been one of the more vocal drivers regarding the bouncing of the cars, and as GPDA director is leading the conversation for those behind the wheel. Russell suggested that before the Azerbaijan race, it was only a matter of time before something major happened as a result of bouncing, especially as the excessive vibrations are directly affecting how the drivers can control the car. Although Russell has suggested that the FIA should do something to limit the problems caused by the bouncing, it has become apparent that F1's teams had earlier blocked a series of technical measures last year, which would have mitigated that problem. This would have mandated a minimum ride height, which would effectively remove the effect of porpoising and bouncing and spare the drivers' backs from taking a beating. McLaren team boss Andrea Seidel added that right now a team knows how to stop it immediately, but doesn't want to compromise on performance. It's not just Mercedes taking the full force, as Carlos Sainz proved vocal about bouncing too, having explained earlier in the season that it's been a distinctly uncomfortable situation to race in. But it was Alpha Tauri's Pierre Gasly who summed it up best. I don't think the FIA should put us in a corner where you've got to deal between health and performance. At the moment, that's the tricky part of it, and clearly not sustainable. So that's what we discussed at the driver's briefing and kind of alerted them on this problem and then tried to ask them to find solutions to save us from ending up with a cane at 30 years old. Regardless, the bouncing issues are going nowhere, and if more drivers end up with considerable back pain, or worse, it could become a bigger problem for the FIA to tackle. Elsewhere on the grid, Baku welcomed the usual array of low drag wings and bodywork to take advantage of the long stretch along the front of the Caspian Sea. Alpine's was arguably the most dramatic, with the rear wing looking incredibly slim and thus found more straight line pace than anybody else. The A522 was given the new wing in a bid to help the team move above its usual mid-pack position, in addition to new modifications that should be carried through to the rest of the season too. One of the notable changes was in its side pod intake, which is notably squarer in design and shifts the overall inlet further forward and closer to the chassis structure. Alpine explained that this was to reduce the overall drag of the design, and also to provide somewhere for the front wheel wake to be worked by the car. With the distinctly lower drag rear wing, Alpine was perhaps compromising on the car's performance in the slower parts of the track, but it gave the team a huge advantage in the faster parts. For the most part, it was a strategy that helped both Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon in defence, as they proved incredibly hard to pass with DRS. The beam wing and front wing were also given Baku-specific updates to accentuate that effect further, and improve the overall efficiency of any downforce created. Thus, Alonso was fastest in the speed trap during the race, clocking in at 332 km an hour, that's 206.3 miles an hour, 3 km an hour than the next fastest, Guan Yu Zhou's Alfa Romeo, and then teammate Esteban Ocon at 326.5 km an hour. That straight line pace may prove valuable next time out, as F1 makes the mammoth trip from Azerbaijan to Montreal, for the first trip to Canada since 2019. And we're glad to have Montreal back.